Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at solving systems of equations algebraically using substitution. The systems that we're going to look at are linear quadratic and quadratic quadratic. All right. The central concept around the method of substitution is using one of your equations that you're given out of the pair here to replace a variable in the other equation with the goal of creating one single new equation that only has one variable in it. So in our case here, we are going to use this equation as a way of replacing y in this equation. And what we're going to get is a new equation that only has x in it. The reason that I'm choosing this one down here is because y is already by itself. y is isolated here. So what this means is I can replace y with x minus 1. So in the other equation right here where I have a y, I can replace it with x minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this one, but instead of the y there, I'm going to write x minus 1. So I'm going to write x squared minus 4x minus 2, but instead of the y, I am going to put x minus 1, and then that equals 2. So this is my new equation. This is a new equation where I've combined those two in a way of getting rid of y. If there's only one variable here now, I can just solve that, and then I'll know the x values that I'm working with here. So you likely want to multiply that out first, eliminate the brackets, and see where that gets you. So we have minus 2x, and we have plus 2 there, because we have minus times minus. And then on the other side, we have 2. If you combine that together, so I'm going to combine these two terms together. I'm going to have x squared minus 6x. I have a plus 2 and a plus 2 on either side. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, or if I move this 2 over and make it minus 2, they cancel each other out. And essentially, I'm just going to have 0 here. The simplest way to solve this equation is by factoring. Now, you might not recognize that as something that you can factor as you have been with all the different trinomials you've been coming up with here because there's no c value there. But actually, it's an easier method of factoring that you likely even learned before, uh, factoring out the greatest common factor. This has x as a common factor. So if I factor out x here, I'm going to get x times x minus 6 equals 0. So this times this has to be 0. So either x is 0, which is one of the values of x, or x minus 6 is 0, in which case x is 6. So we have x is 0, x is 6 here. Those are our two x values, and we're going to use them now to find the y values. Before we do that, though, if you really wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could here. You would just have to use the c value being 0. If you use the quadratic formula and use a c value of 0, it'll work, and it'll give you those values just the same. So we're going to take these two, and we can choose which one of these equations we put them into to get the y values. It's probably best to choose this one because it's a lot simpler for sure. So in the case where x is 0, I have y equals 0 minus 1, or in other words, y equals minus 1. And in the case where I have x equals 6, y is 6 minus 1, or in other words, 5. So my two solutions here are I have 0 minus 1 and I have 6, 5. It's important to group those things together. So one of the solutions is 0 minus 1. And the other solution is 6, 5. That's the solution to that system. You could verify that a variety of ways. You could graph both of those by hand or with technology to see that you get the same solution using that method as well. You could substitute those values in each pair one at a time into each equation to see that it satisfies both of them. We are not going to take the time to do that right now. We are going to do another example using substitution to solve another system. So for this one, 
This actually has two quadratic equations, but the method is going to be the same. The only extra wrinkle here that we have is we don't have one that is already isolated for one of the variables. So you need to look at both of them to decide which one is going to be easier to isolate one of the variables and then use that one to replace that variable in the other equation. So if we look at the variables in each of them, first of all, we're going to realize that x appears a couple of times in here. So that's not going to be the simplest one to isolate x. x does appear only here once, but it is squared. And y is all by itself here. So this is the, the one we're going to target. We're going to use this equation, and we're going to target that y to try and isolate. So if I want to change that one around, what I would do is I would move the y to that side, and I would move the 4 to this side. Because what I'm going to have then is I am going to have y on the right, and I'm going to have 2x squared, and that 4 is going to become minus 4 on that side. So again, what that allows me to do now is in the second equation, this allows me to replace the y with 2x squared minus 4. All right, so if I do that right now, I'm going to rewrite this one, but replace this y with what I know it's now equal to. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 3, but instead of the y, I'm going to replace it with what I know it's equal to here, that. So I'm going to replace it with 2x squared minus 4. And there is, of course, a 1 on that side. I'm going to eliminate those brackets and try and simplify this a little bit. x squared minus 4x. I have minus 6x squared when I multiply that out, that one. And when I multiply the other thing, I'm going to get plus 12 because I have minus 3 times minus 4. And then I still have that 1 on the other side there. And if I simplify that, I have x squared minus 6x squared. That gives me minus 5x squared. I have minus 4x. That's the only x term. And if I move that one over there, I actually am going to have plus 11. This is going to equal 0. If I'm going to try and solve this, I personally think it's easier to make it so the x squared term is positive. So if this goes negative, negative, positive here, I am going to make the first term positive by multiplying both sides by negative 1. In other words, I'm going to switch all of the signs of everything there because multiplying this by negative 1 doesn't change it. So that is the same as saying positive 5x squared plus 4x minus 11 equals 0. It's just easier to try and look at factoring it, and it's easier to try and work with the quadratic formula that way. If you look at this, if you did decide you wanted to try and factor it, I think you're going to find pretty quickly that it doesn't factor. It's not going to factor, therefore we are going to use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, if I set this up, I have minus b, so minus 4, plus or minus square root b squared, so 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is negative 11. Don't miss, don't miss the minus there in front of that, because it'll. if you miss that, you're going to run into troubles. Over 2a, so 2 times 5. If I work through that, you can make it minus 4 plus minus square root 16. This is going to be plus, because I have minus times minus over here. That is going to be 220 there. And this is going to be over 10. So what we have here is we have minus 4 plus minus square root 236 over 10. I'm going to resort to a calculator to get some decimal values for that. All right, so if I'm going to calculate those values, I had negative 4 plus or minus. We'll do the plus first. We need square root of 236. And on the bottom, we need 10. We're going to get that value. I am actually going to store that value as a so I can use it again after. Roughly 1.136. I am going to do that same thing again. But I'm going to use this so I don't have to re-enter the whole thing. I'm just going to go back and change that to a minus sign in that expression. So we have minus root 236. 
that is going to give me that value, which is negative 1.936. I'm going to store that one uh, as B. And then I know I can use those without re-entering them into the calculator. All right, so let's write those down first of all before we calculate Y. We had X was roughly 1.136 and we had X was roughly negative 1.936. Now we're going to find the Y value that corresponds with each of those. Remember I stored this one as A, I stored this one as B just so that I don't have to re-enter it. Most calculators allow you to do that in one way or the other. So to calculate Y, what I'm going to do is I'm, I have to pick one of these equations, one of my original equations, or I could use this one actually, is going to be the best choice to calculate Y because Y is already isolated. So essentially what I'm going to do here is take that equation and substitute that value in for X and find out what I get for Y. So if we go back to the calculator. So first of all, I had that equation as 2. Uh, I can put that number in. I could put, again, 1.136229 or so. And then I could do this squared minus 4. But instead, I think it's going to be easier to just do, since I stored that value, I can just do 2a squared minus 4 and that's going to save me a lot of time and button pushing that's that value that I get with that if I round it to three decimals I have 1.418 I can do the same thing again but put a B I can just do 2 B squared minus 4 gives me the other value there so those two values I'll write them down here this one that went with 1.136 was negative 1.418 roughly and the one that went with this was roughly 3.498 so those are my two solutions if I'm going to write them as ordered pairs as points I'm going to write 1.136 negative 1.418 and the other one was negative 1.936 3.498. It's important to group them together like that because these two values are going to work in both of those equations. Again, you could check it by substituting them in. You could check it by graphing. Those are my two solutions for that. All right. So that is the method of substitution. Again, the key point is take one of the equations, whichever one is simpler to isolate a variable, and then use that to replace that variable in the other equation. All right, that's it.